I'm here today to talk to you as a neonatologist about fetal pain. We've gone over the dating systems. It's very important to differentiate between the post-fertilization age and the last menstrual period dating. I'm here because and it's easy for me to imagine these babies at 20 to 24 weeks post-fertilization age because they are my patients in the NICU. So at 21 post-fertilization age, for example, there's a 53% survival to discharge to home published in June of 2009. This is another example, a chart showing the survival to discharge of, in pediatrics 2010, post fertilization age. At 20 weeks, only 6%, 21 weeks, 25%, and at 22 weeks, over half of those babies survived to go home. And our hospital data is very similar. The 22 to 24 week post fertilization age data, 80% of those babies discharged to home. So these are some pictures of what the babies look like in utero. 14 weeks post-fertilization through 22 weeks post-fertilization. You can see the detail in the face. You can see the movement. The 4D ultrasounds that we have now are real-time images. The baby's kicking, moving, sucking their thumb, doing all things babies do in a smaller state. A picture of a 20-week post-fertilization baby here, and these are my patients. This is that same infant when they're born and when we take care of them every day in our NICU. This is a 22-week post-fertilization baby. Very common, 24-week LMP baby in our NICU. We take care of these babies all the time. They survive, they do well, and go home. This baby's 25 weeks by LMP. These survival rate is eight, upwards of 85%. When we have a 25-week baby in our NICU, the assumption is the baby will do well, go home with mom. So when you look at the milestones of pain development, it happens early on. Eight weeks, face skin receptors appear. 14 weeks, the sensory fibers grow into the spinal cord. By 15 weeks, the monoamine fibers reach the cortex, and by 20 weeks, the, all the pain receptors are present and linked. The cerebral cortex at 20 weeks, the fetal brain actually has a full complement of neurons that are present in adulthood. At 20 weeks, you can do EEG recordings on the babies. At 22 weeks, we do EEGs on our patients, and they're the same EEG patterns that you see in a neonate uh, born at term. There's behavioral responses as evidence for, our, for pain. At eight weeks, the fetus makes movements. Again, we have 4D ultrasounds that show 3D images of babies kicking, moving, practically dancing in the womb. At 20 weeks, the fetus responds to sound, and many studies published literature have shown that they react to stimuli by moving away from painful stimuli, by wincing, recoiling, vigorous body movements. You can see it in real time. It's like watching a movie. There have been studies that look at the fetus um, when you can sample blood through the baby's liver versus sampling blood through the umbilical cord, and there's no neurons and no nerve tissue that the baby would sense pain from the umbilical cord. But when you take blood from a baby's liver, it feels it. It moves away from the needle, and the stress hormones of the baby, which are measurable, go up by 500%. So the hormonal response to pain in these babies, which I see every day, are identical between the fetus, the premature baby, and even the adult. The stress hormone response for a premature infant, again, rises upwards of 500%. The cortisol, just the same hormone that we can measure in adults, is a, approximately 200% increase. And this is beginning at 18 weeks gestation. We can measure this and have measured this and published it. When you look at neuropeptides in pain, the, the um, neuropeptides that help um, proclimate the signal for pain, substance P and enkephalin, are found very early, 11 weeks and 13 weeks. There's actually published data showing that it's the later part of pregnancy that, in which the descending inhibitory pathways, pathways of fetal pain develop, meaning that the first part um, of pregnancy is actually when the pain system develops, and the latter part is when the pain mitigating system develops. So actually, some people believe that fetuses feel more pain than um, later born infants. And the, uh, the evidence that supports that is that increased concentrations of drugs are required for sedation of premature infants. Again, the stress hormone response is actually higher in premature infants than adults going, undergoing similar surgery, such as cardiac surgery. The pain transmitters in the spine are abundant, and the pain inhibiting transmitters that we all have are sparse in the premature infant. So again, if you look at this slide, here's the pain system developing, here's the gestation in weeks, and the pain modifying system really doesn't happen until later on. So they're basically just a raw bundle of nerves in the NICU. And these are the patients that I perform procedures on every day, and I can guarantee you that when I put a chest tube in or I intubate a, a patient or put an IV in, they feel it. 
This is um, actually a picture of a woman I was, had the privilege of meeting who was born 23 years ago. At that time, she was the smallest surviving um, preemie. She was 24 weeks post fertilization age. She weighed 280 grams, less than a Coke can. And she went on to be an honor student in college. That same hospital in 2004 actually broke their own record. This baby was 25 weeks LMP, weighed 244 grams, and is now um, doing well in ele elementary school. She has a twin sister, and they're both actually doing very well. Um, so in my experience as a neonatologist, I would just like to mention that it's no longer a mystery what's going on in the womb, because those same babies come to me, and I see them firsthand every day, and work with their families, and we can see how they react to pain when we do procedures in the NICU. One of the most basic um, of government principles is that the state should protect its members from harm. Technology, imaging, and clinical neonatology enable us to know much more about fetal life than ever before. We now understand the fetus to be a developing, moving, interacting member of the human family who feels pain, just as we feel pain. If we are to be a benevolent society, we are bound to protect the fetus. We should not tolerate the gruesome and painful procedures being performed on the smallest of our nation. Thank you.